Hi, my name's Stephanie, and this is my friend Bert. He's a great basin gopher snake, and he's here to help me tell you all about reptiles. See, scientists group living organisms together based on adaptations or things that they have in common. Adaptations. Have you heard that word before? An adaptation is something an animal has or does that helps it live in its home. And all the animals that we're talking about today belong to a group called reptiles. They have um, dry, scaly skin, they're cold-blooded, and they don't have a larval stage. Now, reptiles, they are showed up in our fossil records over 315 million years ago. I know, that's a long time, right? And there's over 8,000 different species or types of reptiles on every continent except for Antarctica, which makes sense because Antarctica's cold. And these guys are cold-blooded. No, that doesn't mean that they have ice cubes in their blood. It means that they rely on heat from external sources like the sun or this heat lamp, which is keeping our lizards warm. So when it's hot outside, reptiles are hot. And when it's cold outside, reptiles are cold. Not like us. We have uh, usually around the same temperature, 98.6 degrees. We are warm-blooded mammals. And the only time that that temperature changes is if we're sick or injured. So think about it. The last time you got really sick, did your mom stick a thermometer in your mouth? She was checking to see if your temperature changed. If it went up, maybe it read 100 or 102. And when that happens, you know what that means. Rest, fluids, and maybe even a trip to the doctor. Not for Bert, though. When they want to warm up, they do something called basking. And all the reptiles do this. You might have seen turtles on logs um, in the middle of a pond or a lake. They're basking, they're getting that sunlight, and they're, it's helping them warm up their body. Another adaptation of reptiles is this dry, scaly skin that Bert has. He's covered in scales on his bottom and his top, and that actually keeps moisture in so he can live in really dry areas, like well, right here in Utah. Now, all of my reptile friends have dry, scaly skin, and they just look a little different when it comes to each friend. So we're gonna meet another reptile friend, but to do that, I need to put Bert away. Now that we put Bert away, come on over here and meet another animal friend of mine. This is Laser, and Laser is a desert tortoise, and he's covered in scales too. See him all over his body and his head, and even this really cool shell of his. And this shell is a great adaptation. It's really hard, and it makes him look just like a rock. And if you look like a rock, you're probably not going to get eaten. And the cool thing about tortoises and turtles is, like all reptiles, they come out looking just like their mom and dad. In fact, turtles and tortoises have shells when they're born. They're just a lot smaller and super cute. And what happens is, as the turtle or the tortoise grows, so does their shell. These big scales you see on his shell are called scoots. And there's this stuff called keratin. It's what our, our fingernails and our hair is made of. And it actually forms around the edges of the scoot and grows as the tortoise grows. Now I know what you're thinking. So what's the difference between an amphibian like this frog here and our reptile friends? Well, there's quite a few differences. But remember how I said laser comes out of an egg looking just like his mom and dad? That's not the same for Oliver the Frog. He actually was born as a tadpole and looks more like a fish than a frog. And that's that larval stage. So to wrap up, remember, reptiles have dry, scaly skin, they're cold-blooded, and they don't have a larval stage. I hope you had fun learning about reptiles with me. Thanks, and I'll see you at the center.